Well everyone, it looks like iPadOS 26 Developer Beta 5 is now out to test out and we're going to go through all the changes, see exactly what nuanced details there are to really kind of highlight and see if there's anything worth showing off, but most importantly talk about the bug fixes because I know that we are in a beta program so a lot of performance issues and bugs should be happening during this testing period but it has been relatively detrimental to my workflow, so I'm just hoping we do get some better overall stability. But without further ado, let's talk about iPadOS 26 Beta 5. Let's get into it. But now before we continue, definitely consider subscribing to the channel because it helps motivate us to stay up to date with these videos and make sure you guys are in the know in terms of what exactly is out from a beta perspective. So definitely subscribe down below. But now let's actually go in and see exactly what this beta build and beta size was. Well, all right, everyone, let's get right into this. And as you can see here, I want to start off with the size of the build. We're at about 10 gigabytes on iPadOS 26 Beta 5. To give you some context, I'm using the M4 iPad Pro with one terabyte of storage. So your mileage may vary on how big this is, depending on which iPad you have, how old it is, and things of that nature. I've seen it as low as 3 gigs and as high as 15 gigs, but this is what I'm dealing with. So give yourself at least 20 gigs of open storage to get this installed and installed correctly. And then if we go over here into our settings, go into our about, go into the iPadOS version, we're looking at about 23A530 a lowercase g. So we are getting closer and closer to the final public release, which should be in early to mid September. We've already got leaks and rumors that it looks like September 9th is going to be the keynote with September 18th being the final release day of the new iPhone. So somewhere between that time frame is when the public version of iPadOS 26 should be available to download for anybody that has an iPad. So in terms of what's new, we do get a bunch of new splash screens with some of the main applications in the Apple ecosystem. First and foremost is the notes application. It lets you know exactly what's new with it. So you get the notes on the Apple Watch, your call transcripts that get saved into your notes application when you're done with your calls, markdown exports, which apparently is very important and very unique. And you have a few other handwriting things like a new pen tool and things of that nature. You also have a new one for Freeform. So it says new iPad OS design, the Read Pen and handwriting upgrades so you can create traditional calligraphy with the Read Pen. You also have updates to image playgrounds to create better images from your drawings. And lastly, they added scenes to jump to regions off the board and send a copy of your board to others and more. So just again, a lot of quality of life updates for Freeform. We also got this new splash screen which I thought was kind of funny because it says, welcome to the App Store, a safe and trusted place to discover your amazing apps and games because again Apple especially in the EU has now allowed for side loading as well as third-party app stores so they're really kind of putting their foot down saying this is a safe and trusted place to discover amazing apps and games we also got a new splash screen for the music application so it lets you know about the new auto mix which is one of my favorite features of iPad OS and iOS 26 because it's almost baffling how good it is. You also have the lyrics and translation and pronunciation, pin music to your library and the ability to replay. So check out your month by month and year end stats easily in the application. So unlike Spotify, where you have to wait to the end of the year to get your recap, you can kind of do this in real time with the music application. So the next thing I want to bring up is going to be the number pad lock screen animation. So if you are here and Face ID isn't working and you swipe up, you can see that the new animation for the number pad shows up and it's kind of this bouncy look to the number pad itself. So I'm gonna kind of press cancel, we'll do this again. It's gonna look for my face, I can't find it, and then it's gonna bring up that number pad which is much bouncier than it was before. Another change, which is gonna be a lot more visible on iOS, but iPadOS as well, is that the dock outline, so the actual size of the dock got thicker vertically. So something to take note of, it looks very wonky on iOS 26 beta 5, but to each their own, I like to have the large size icons, but again, it's even thicker than it was before. Next up in terms of what's new, if you actually go into wiggle or jiggle mode, depending on who you are, what you're calling it, the new edit button or this minus button has now gone transparent and a little glassy. Before it wasn't that, now it's kind of matching the theme that it did before, so that's good to know. And then also, if you go, for instance, into the share sheet, so if I go back into my photos and I want to press the share, so I press this share button, we now have a new icon for AirDrop. So AirDrop got a new icon, and to really look at it to see what it looks like, we're going to go into our normal mode, press edit, we're going to customize, let's go into the default look. So you can see all the colors that are here. I might actually go back to this because it just looks a lot cleaner. But if we go back into our share sheet, so let's go into photos, we'll press share right here. You can see that the AirDrop icon is brand new. So something that Apple changed up for the first time in years. And then another new thing that we notice is if we go into our control center and we actually go to edit it. So if we swipe up, long press on here, we're gonna add control. 
the notes application actually has a few new ones or two different in the notes app. So if we scroll down to notes, you now have notes and then quick note. There never used to be two here, but now there are two. Something to uh, take into account as well in the control center. And then to continue in the control center, which is kind of funny, just a UI change that Apple introduced is if you try to swipe down, it actually stretches the control center, which it didn't do that before. And then it bounces back up. So as you can see, it does bounce. And the same thing goes with different portions. So for instance, if you press back on here, there's a new bounce effect in the settings or whenever you go back into a different page. So again, just more UI changes, nothing kind of drastic happening here, just bug fixes and UI changes. And then for me, the number one setting change that's been bothering me since the very beginning is going to be in the camera app. Again, this is a little bit more relevant in the camera app for iPhone, but if you go into your settings and go into the camera, there's a new mode switching mode at the very bottom or a toggle. So classic mode switching, you can toggle it off and on. So to show you guys what that means is if I go into the camera application, if I want to toggle between the different modes, it, you have to swipe up or swipe down. So if I swipe down, it actually swipes it up. If I swipe up, it actually swipes it down. And I actually want it the reverse. So if I go into my settings, go into this classic mode switch, then go back into the camera application. Now, if I swipe up, it'll take me to video. If I swipe down, it'll actually go in the direction that I want it to go. So that is a new added addition that Apple forewent until now, but I'm very glad that they brought that back because I would get very confused and very annoyed when I would try to swipe one way on my iPhone camera and it would take me the other way. But those are all the new changes we saw with iPadOS 26 right now. Again, nothing too crazy, but the last thing I do want to bring up is going to be battery life. So if you go into battery life, you can see that I'm at 24% right now. It gives you my suggestions. But in terms of overall battery usage, we have about an hour and 35 minutes of screen on time and two hours and 33 minutes of screen on time for today. But I did like Wednesday, we had three hours and 46 minutes. I used about 78% of the battery. So again, when I use it for what I use it for, which is gonna be the LumaFusions, ChatGPTs, uh, Orion, which allows me to play video games on here with my Xbox directly plugged in. These are all pretty task intensive, right? I'm not really just sitting here browsing Safari too much. I do on occasion, but my use cases here are mostly task intensive, meaning I'm gonna get about six hours of battery life, maybe eight hours, depending on how I use it. But if you really wanna push it, you can definitely get 10 to 12 hours of battery life on a full charge if you know what you're doing from a battery consumption standpoint. So here, two and a half hours of screen on time, 10 hours of screen off time, and that only took up about 50% of my battery, but I'm very happy with the battery life overall in terms of what needs to be improved. The one thing that does need to change in the settings application is if we go into our general or go into where it says screen capture, I think Apple should get away with this HDR format because I really think it changed what it meant from a codec standpoint of what a screen recording is recognized as when you are using it in editing softwares. Again, very niche situation, but overall, I guess stability for day-to-day -day use has been great. Battery life has been pretty decent. It's just the file management situation and the file types and the screen recording has been for me a little bit annoying. And then on the iPhone side, it's just, it gets overheated way too quickly. Again, we're in beta, so this is all supposed to happen. This is all testing formats but that is gonna do it, let's finish up the video. Now that would just about do for this video, everybody. As you saw, there weren't too many changes with this beta. We are now on beta five with the public release that should be coming out in September. We've already seen leaks and rumors that September 9th will be the keynote, meaning that somewhere around September 18th to September 20th, is when the public should be getting iOS and iPadOS 26. And I'm excited for people to get a stable version of this because overall it has been amazing. It's been great. It's a great overall UI change. We got some nice new quality of life features, especially on the iPad side, but Apple definitely needs to tighten it up before it gets ready for that public release. But that'll do it. Leave some comments down below if you've installed it, what you think needs to be fixed, and maybe some other features that we didn't notice for a follow-up video that we have going on later on in the week. But like I said, that'll do it. If you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And if you want to watch more videos like this one, check out one of these update videos right here. Until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace, everyone. Definitely check out that wokiest video about this USB-C hub that also transforms your Mac Mini into a retro Mac. Something worth considering.